Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the BRK Ghost and what we're going to be doing in this one is modifying the original hammer to accept an adjustable pip for the end of it. What this will allow us to do is adjust the stroke of the hammer and whilst at the moment it doesn't really do that much for us, when we start making additional components for the rifle and further tuning it, it will be handy to have. But it's one of those stepping stone improvements that we need to do as further down the line we will need a bit of adjustability in this area. Now I don't normally like modifying standard components, I much rather make my own, but in this case I didn't have a dovetail cutter on hand small enough to create the small dovetail which holds the cocking dog on. We could have worked around that if we really wanted to, but this one will be good for experimentation as we can play around with it and then when we remake it we know exactly what we need to remake. The job itself is pretty self explanatory, we had the hammer chucked up in the lathe, drilled and tapped the end M6 by one deburred everything, then made an adjustable pip for the end of it. The other minor modification we're making is that the pip on the end of the hammer will now be Delrin, and this will just help quieten down some of the action noise. So instead of a metal to metal contact, we'll have a metal to Delrin contact. Now the FAC models do already have an adjustable pip on the end of the hammer, However, the Sub-12 rifles come through with a non-adjustable hammer. Other than that, we've made a couple other modifications to the rifle. We've fitted a pin probe to it, and we've also changed the valve return spring. Before we get into that though, the tool that you're seeing me use here is called a rotary brooch. And what this tool basically does is allow us to cut non-round holes into material. We're using it in this application to cut a 3mm hex into the end of the material and that will allow us to use a 3mm allen key to adjust the pip on the end of the hammer. And as you can see there it works quite well giving us a nice fit on the end of an allen key. We've swapped out the standard pellet probe for a pin probe but because the pin probe is a little more efficient and it also cycles the magazine a lot nicer. So a little upgrade with no real downside and then the valve return spring was swapped out for a slightly stiffer one. We've done this because the valve return spring did feel a little weak when it was fitted to the rifle, so we swapped it out for a stiffer one in hopes of reducing some of the hammer bounce. And those two little improvements have made the rifle a little more efficient. I'll share some of the figures at the end of the video, but that's where we've got to so far. So I'll take you over to the bench and we'll get you a good look at the components before they get fitted to the rifle. Right then, and here we have the modified components, so I'll just give you a quick look over them. Here we have our hammer with the m 6 by one tapped hole in the end, and also the lock and grub screw on the back there. If we look in the back, you might see it, you might not, but we do also have a PTFE washer in the back of the hammer. At the top here we have our adjustable pip, so on this end we have the hex key in the back, and that fits a 3mm allen key really quite nicely. Then on this side we have our Delrin tip, that just helps quieten down the action noise a little, as instead of a metal to metal contact between the hammer and the valve, we've now got a plastic to metal contact. Up here is just one of the PTFE washers, so one of these is in the hammer, and this one goes on the hammer spring adjuster over here. All the PTFE guides do is just allow the hammer spring to slip and slide and do what it wants, and not get bound up. Right then, so I'll put it together and you can see it all in one place. Here we go. The locking screw at the moment does tighten directly onto the threads of the adjuster screw, so that's not ideal at the moment, but when we remake the hammer that's something I'm hoping to fix. For now though, we had to do it that way, as there's not much meat between this section here and the threads, so there's not enough room to sort of get a Delrin or Peak Packer in there, but we'll sort that out at a later date. What this little setup will allow us to do is experiment with things. It won't necessarily make the rifle any more accurate or any more efficient just at the moment, but when we start messing around with different hammer springs, different reg settings, all that type of thing, the adjustable pip on the end of the hammer will be very handy for fine tuning. The only other thing that I want to show you in regards to this little setup here is the back of the rifle. So here's the top rail and in this area here our cheek piece would normally be fitted but if you remove the cheek piece you gain access to this little hole here. When it's all or when the rifle's all built up this little hole matches up with that one in the hammer. So as I said earlier the FAC hammers do have an adjustable pip on the end 
However, the sub 12 ones don't. And lastly, I'll just show you the pin probe. So this is a pin probe, obviously. It's a little more efficient than the standard one and it also cycles the magazines a lot nicer. But that's just a direct replacement for the standard one that's in the rifle. And finally, we'll take a look at the valve return spring. So this is the standard one that's in the rifle already. What we did was replace this with just a heavier duty one. So it's a bit stiffer to close the valve. The last thing I want to mention is the little mods such as the valve return spring change and the pellet probe did allow us to get a few extra shots out of the rifle. So I think before we was getting about 270 shots whereas now that's bumped up to just over 300 and again that's from the same 200 bar fill. Now the rifle's still got a lot more in it and I expect that figure to jump up when we start messing around with different hammer springs, different reg pressures and all that sort of thing. But we'll show you what we do as we do it. For now though, that's about going to do it for this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.